been a couple of days of crazy rain. We even had a power outage for, for a little while and we did a test of the battery bank, which turned out really good. Of course, we don't have solar panels up yet and it's not connected, but we um, flicked the switch, basically ran the house off of the battery bank, which wasn't fully charged, but it was a successful test and it worked really well and it got me motivated <laughs> to get this going. So in between rain, we've been out here doing a little bit of building here and there. I haven't really filmed too much, but I wanted to show you where we're at. So what am I talking about? Well, we're building a solar array pergola with a rather fancy playhouse underneath. I made two videos about this build so far. You can pause this video right now and catch up if you want. Last one we left off, I was putting up the walls, that sectioning of the garden shed from the playhouse area. So corner angle of windows. So the windows have now been put together, like put in properly with, uh, with paper and caulk or the goop. Anyway, I actually have a video of how I put the videos in on my, my little workshop. If you want to see how I did that, you can check that one out. I go through the process completely. Windows are in and we got some, uh, some trim around the windows, which really kind of make them pop. When there are window trims, I think there's two camps, right? It's the mitered corner trim and it's this one, which is more like the craftsman style trim. This is the, like my preferred trim. I mean, partly because it's easier, right? You don't have to get those miters perfectly, but I also rather like the look. I think it looks a little bit more utilitarian. I like it, I did the same thing on the house there. So ventilation is always an issue, right? So what we're doing here now is a cold roof. So basically we're putting netting on the eaves um, on both sides so that the, the airflow will just kind of move in between. And then we're gonna cap this with beadboard. So it's not gonna, you know, it's gonna be like on top of the structure itself. So we're just cutting up an old screen door for the netting and stapling it into each section. And you can see it's been raining and so we've had some splatter coming up here. Now the idea is you know, we're going to put gravel that whole area and more gravel here too. We just picked up a couple of bags to try to uh, prevent too much splashing from happening. Okay, so here we prepared some wire. And this is flexible wire. These here will just plug into the lights. So you have these little connection points and then just click into each other. Yeah, I know. And then they'll go into the ceiling like this. Works quite perfect because this is, you know, a two by four roof and these fit into that space. the ends of each one. So we got the wire coming through there and then drilling through holes in the studs um, and then connected like that. <laughs> I was thinking um, having like like wired in lighting certainly like puts this um, in a slightly different category from like basic playhouse. Uh, but it's just one of those nice features and especially if you wire it up and then all you do is plug it into the solar generator. I mean how cool is that? And then because we have solar we'll just be able to power it like that so it will be like its own little self-contained unit right where power is coming in power is being used for lighting we'll have a switch on the wall you can just turn the switch the lights come on <laughs> plugged it in there I'm testing them out now so six of these all together using 58 watts okay so what's on the docket um well Beadboard ceiling. Still need to uh, cap some of these walls, namely that one, that one, and this one. Um, although it's kind of nice to have it open at the same time because you can bring material in and out easier. It's a lot of light. Also got an outdoor fixture, like a lantern that needs to be wired. And uh, that would look kind of cool actually, I think outside. So working on putting the beadboard up. So the tricky thing, well the tricky thing is that we have these lights coming down, right? So we need to mark out where the lights are going and then cut holes so that they can fit through. One thing that's kind of good about beadboard is that, you know, you already have the ridges or, or the design, so it's easy to measure out. So this is the first piece that's going right up there. So we got 
cut this up. We got the holes here, so I just need to find the wire. Oh, perfect. So the light will go right on here. And let's see where this one is. Ah, perfect. <laughs> okay, I'm just stapling this up. Mark the stud location here so we can to work with as well so okay so now we got some more and some more staples later but okay so we got the light here so let's connect it first and then we'll bring it in this guy ah look at that and then it just kind of fits in place and it's super clean so these are pretty low powered lights, about 10 watts each. So you can use a, a pretty small solar generator to power these. Um, these are also suitable for wet locations, which is a, a good idea because it's not like a super finished or sealed space. Let's see we get that. Okay, so we got that in and then we need to get these little metal thingies and they kind of just hold it in place. Cool, one more left to do more lights than I have in my shop. <laughs> now, um, shall we turn them on? It's actually quite tiny. This is one of those kind of travel ones. So we have this hooked up here now. We have the, uh, uh, we actually have a dimmer here on the switch. And we'll flick the switch. And we have lights. Okay, let's try the dimmer. Of course it's really bright. But yeah, you can definitely see it. Bright day. It's nicer the, the dimmer. Just makes it a lot more cozy when if you don't want it too bright. Look how perfect that is. Look how clean it looks. Okay, so now you have the cap of the beadboard right here. But then if you look up uh, in the back there, that's where that netting is. And I was actually gonna show we just trapped the spider in there already, but it, it's back there now. So it's capped there, and then it's gonna continue. We're gonna get the next piece here, and it's gonna be capped. And then we have ventilation there too. So there will be airflow moving all above the beadboard. Good morning, ready day. So today, hoping to make a lot of progress, going to close up the remaining walls um, and do a lot of painting, trim work, a lot of miscellaneous stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad. Yesterday I was thinking about should I sneak in a little painting, but the weather was like a little iffy. But I was like, okay, I, I'll wait. I'm so glad I waited because we had the most epic downpour last night <laughs> for like an hour of just psh. But today we um, are not going to have any rain. It's going to be beautiful all day. Right now, only a little tiny gap there, and that needs to go. Yeah, it's next. Yeah. So I got the cat piece on here, looks different. So now I'm just caulking everywhere. So all the seams, sometimes we have like overlap. Right here. Hey Darwin, get out of the sun. Definitely feels different when you close up all the walls, right? So we got uh, some uh, leftover beadboard on this wall here too. I actually think we're picking up some more beadboard <laughs> now because it looks, just kind of cleans it up a lot to uh, put some more on the wall. Okay, got some trim paint. That's a lot better. That's incredibly more efficient. Since this is up a little bit, we definitely needed some, some steps. Here is there is a, a basic little stairs. And if you're curious as to how I built those, then please check out the stairs video I published a couple of days ago. It's a simple, basic build. And when I put it up on Instagram, I got so many questions about it, I figured it might need its own video. Sometimes simple is exactly what you want. There's a fair amount of, of little gaps here and there. I don't mind at all, you know, that's why that's why we got caulk and we got trim and we got gap fillers and things like that. Now up here, um, I don't actually care about capping this because this is where we have the netting on the inside. So we have that uh, cold roof. So we have the ventilation going, but on the sides here, like on, the, on these corners and stuff, that's where we don't want, you know, moisture to come in or bugs or whatever. So, funny thing with trim, when you are 
<laughs> thinking about capping things like you can go on forever capping things right everything looks better with trim and it's just a question of like to what degree do you take something like this because obviously it's like a playhouse it's not like <laughs> not a finished space um, but there are like aspects of it which makes it feel like a finished space we just ordered a rug <laughs> and there's going to be a hardwood floor in here mostly because we have some leftover hardwood flooring but I mean obviously it's not conditioned there's no insulation in the walls or anything like that so it's livable but up to a point right Today here I'm just about to do some painting on the house and I was just checking the levels that we're getting right now. Okay, so what am I talking about? Well, we put some portable solar panels up on the roof. There's actually a video review of those if you're interested. But basically I just thought it would be a good test until we put up the rigid panels to see what kind of sun exposure we are getting on the roof. And we have the energy from those solar panels funneling into the portable battery inside. So as of this point, the little house is self-supporting in terms of energy. So we just got some shade on the solar panels. And remember, since they are in series, they act as one. So if we're getting some shade on one panel and the other one is in full sun, it shuts down like both of them at the same time. So currently we're only getting 98 watts. That's not good. I mean, that's just how the way it works. But in terms of planning out for this future project, in terms of putting up more, a lot more panels on there, that's why you want to have some, some in series and some in parallel. So at this point, the, there's like part shade. So it's like we're getting 293 watts coming in, which I actually was kind of surprised about. I thought that was a decent amount with part shade. It's kind of hazy today. Ah, oh, 326. So after yesterday's downpour, everything's a little wet. We have gravel coming soon, so I was gonna start putting down filter fabric here in the front. Our neighbor's farm animals are in rare form this morning. They've got chickens and goats, and they're quite loud sometimes. So if that's what you hear in the background. <laughs> so we have enough to cover most of this, but we have ordered some more. I have been looking forward to this gravel because first of all to not have this mud clay area when it's raining uh, but also because it will just section off the space so much and clean it up. Gravel is by far one of the cheapest and easiest ways to create a patio area. If I wanted to spend more time and money then laying a brick patio would have been cool but that is a whole other beast. The underlayment fabric I'm just putting down here to avoid weeds coming up through too quickly. quite a lot of gravel just like general stuff so uh, <laughs> how much it is um, seemed like a lot when we ordered it if you ever wondered what three cubic yards of gravel looks like 10 truckloads worth you've got your answer I know it doesn't really look like that much does it but this is 10,000 pounds Okay, the door has had some minor surgery on it. Um, let me show you and then I'm gonna paint it. Exterior semi-gloss. This is, you know, is an interior door we bought um, and we needed to chop it off to fit in the Hobbit house, right? Um, now the reason why it's interior is because we're looking for a narrow door. This is actually a closet door. So um, it, uh, this is kind of what it looks like. Inside we chopped off a little bit more here now because since it is hollow, we needed to cap it, right? So we put inside here, we chopped up a little bit more, but put sawdust in here, mixed with epoxy, and then capped it with this piece of white oak that also has epoxy on both sides and any gaps or anything like that. That should do a good job sealing it. Epoxy is everywhere. Cleaned it up. And then of course we need paint, so I'm gonna put on the slob on a lot of paint on the, uh, the main parts. This is just a exterior semi-gloss paint. Okay, we have first layer of gravel. Still need some more filter fabric right there, but we got gravel, so no more mud. Now it got dark. So I got the whole place painted 
need to finish up with more trim. Um, I still have some gaps to be filled. I'm gonna add some of like the gap filler. Let's see if I can get this to work here. Okay, I need some. This stuff, this stuff is always kind of cool, right? Because it comes in, you know, not so big, and then it just expands. I always thought it was so cool. So paint really cleans things up, doesn't it? It looks good. Um, of course, not done. There's a lot of little things left to do in terms of the house. Um, and then of course the solar, which is like a whole other thing to get into. Next step, I want to focus on the inside and do a flooring. I want to do a, a nice oak flooring. So that's gonna be cool. Thanks so much for watching guys and uh, I'll see you soon, bye.